Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly press conference. Today, we will first provide a status update on four of the Better Together projects, and that'll be a majority of the time. Second, we'll present an event by the United Clergy of Erie, which is taking place tomorrow. Bishop Brock will be presenting that. And then I have two brief announcements, very brief, right at the end. So I'm very pleased to begin today's press conference with a detailed discussion of four of the projects which grew out of the People's Supper process. That took place during the first half of 2019. As many of you know, my team and I came into office with a six-word vision, I'm sorry, six-word mission, build opportunity, restore hope, transform Erie, and a two-sentence vision. Erie is a community of choice. We celebrate our rich cultural diversity, our welcome, welcoming, vibrant neighborhoods, our world-class downtown and bayfront, our excellent education for everyone, and our abundance of family-sustaining jobs. Everything my team and I do is based on this mission and vision. Earlier this year, we set aside 26 key performance indicators to measure our progress towards activating the, the vision in this document. Many of our key performance indicators go hand in hand with Better Together projects that you'll be hearing about today. Before I introduce our first speaker, I must say that people are now working together in Erie like never before. We want everyone to feel part of this and grow it even further. That's why we created the Better Together Council about a year ago. The Better Together Council grew out of the six month and nine dinner People's Supper experience. The Better Together Council is a group of civic minded individuals who have been working to help us end racism in the city of Erie. The goal of our People's Supper series was to strengthen Erie by healing the breach in interpersonal relationships caused by racial, ethnic, political, ideological, sexual, and religious differences. From January to June of 2019, we engaged in an exciting initiative in collaboration with the People's Supper, which is a national organization which brings people together to break down barriers that divide us while breaking bread together. The Erie East People's Supper brought together about 20 African Americans, 20 Asian Americans, 20 New Americans, and 20 white Americans. This series of nine suppers led the eight Erie residents to see each other as people and built trust as they got to know each other. It was amazing to everyone involved how this group bonded. But my team and I realized we had to do more than just the nine suppers. We wanted to initiate projects, policies, and initiatives that would foster diversity, equity, and inclusion in Erie and open the door to an opportunity never experienced before in Erie. To make this happen, during the last People's Supper experience, the group brainstormed eight initiatives to get more people involved and move Erie forward. COVID-19 got in our way for the last few months, but we are here today to refocus and provide an update on the next steps regarding four of those eight initiatives. The four we will discuss are Erie's Promise, the Better Together Youth Matters Summit, the Multicultural Community Development Fund, and the Minority New, New American Workforce Development Initiative. We will provide an update on the other four projects in the coming weeks. Kay Scary from the People's Supper has joined us virtually to share some context about these four projects, which originated from the People's Supper process. She will also introduce the new website, which we'll launch today. So now I'll turn it over to Kay. Hi, Kay. Welcome. Hi, thank you, Mayor Schember. Um, and hello, Yuri. It is so good to be with you this morning, even from afar. Um, my name is Kay Scary, and I'm the Community Director of the People's Supper. At the People's Supper, as Mayor Schember explained, we use shared meals to connect people across lines of difference, grounding our work in the popular adage that change moves at the speed of trust, and we would add that trust moves at the speed of relationships. We've been in relationship with you all since 2018, when your mayor brought us in to design a series of suppers that connected 80 res Erie residents across lines of race and ethnicity for a chance to examine their Erie stories, their personal stories, and to really consider where there were gaps in Erie in regards to racial equity. 
Here we worked to change who gets to be part of a conversation around what needs to happen in our own community. And we answered the question, how might we make sure that the people at the table in Erie represent the community of Erie as we collectively seek to build a theory that works for all of us? As Mayor Schember shared, at the end of our work, participants from this series came up with eight project ideas to make Erie more equitable. And today you'll have a chance to hear an update on where four of those projects are and where we're going to head from here. It's been just over a year since our series came to a close. And it's been a real honor for me to get to watch these projects begin to unfold and to see the dedication of the mayor's staff, the Better Together Council, and the participants from the series. I'm excited that today you'll get to hear a bit of what I've gotten to see happen over the last months, and I hope it strengthens and renews your hope for all that here it might be. One of the things we heard pretty consistently from participants in our People's Suffrage series is that they wish more residents might have been able to join in. While we know that we had to keep that space closed for the purpose of the process, we also hear and honor that request, and your mayor wanted to create a way for your residents to come together and have people suffer of their own. So, we are pleased to announce that today, if you go to the City of Erie website, you'll find a People Suffer button, which will take you to a guide we created on how to host People Suffer series and how to do it virtually. This virtual racial justice journey guide is based heavily upon our work here in Erie. And it tells the story of your community alongside the distilling steps you can take to organize these conversations throughout your neighborhood, in your company, in your faith or civic organization, at your school. We hope it gives you the space and the guidance to be able to examine your own story as you bear witness to the stories of your neighbors. As you hear those updates on the projects today, we hope this guide will be an invitation for you to join in the work, considering how you might join alongside the mayor, alongside others you'll hear from today, to live into the hope and possibility of our shared future, building together the area that we want to be part of. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Kay. We really appreciate all that you and the People Supper have done to help us make Erie a more diverse, welcoming community. Next, I'll call on Michael Otlaw, our community liaison, who led the People Supper here in Erie, he will share his views on the activities taking place and exactly what we're trying to accomplish with them. Michael will also introduce our four project leads to provide reports on, the, on their progress. Michael. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone. So the four projects that the mayor alluded to carries the heartbeat of diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we can all agree that education is the greatest equalizer and the gateway to home ownership and building wealth. We believe the Erie Promise Program, headed by Mark Blunt, co-founder and board chair of R. Benjamin Wiley Charter School, and Sarah Young, the AmeriCorps VISTA, will help accomplish the following. Increase the, increase the number of high school graduates who resides within the city of Erie, help high school graduates obtain scholarships or grant funding to attend a secondary education inst institution, increase the number of high school graduates who resides within the city of Erie, increase the number of trade schools, college, university graduates, and increase enrollments within the Erie of school, I'm sorry, within the city of Erie school district. To give you more of a in-depth analysis of the Erie Promise Program. I invite Mark Blunt to report. Mark. Thank you. I'd like to first uh, thank the mayor for allowing us this opportunity to present this grand project. And I would also like to say uh, this is a very challenging event to pull off. And hopefully what we're doing is we're going to restore hope and I believe that hope is just as contagious as any virus out there. And right now we need some hope. So it has long been a commitment of Mayor Simber to ensure that Erie is a place that offers excellent education for everyone. As we look across our nation, we know very well that there are significant racial disparities in education and educational access. We cannot overstate the fact that the ability to pay for higher education is one of the contributing factors for these disparities. In 2018, a study done by the American Sociological Association found that black students held as much as 85 percent 
more debt than white students. In that same year, that journal Sociology of Race and Ethnicity found that 15 years after graduation, black students held 186% more debt than white students. In that same year, the Center for American Process Progress found that black students are more likely than white students to drop out of school, a large number of them citing fear of going further into debt as a chief among the reasons for leaving. We are committed to facing these disparities head on in Erie, ensuring that students across our community have the support they need to pursue education beyond high school. The Erie Promise seeks to remove financial barriers for the city of Erie's high school students in accessing higher education and vocational opportunities. With over 203 Promise programs throughout the United States, Promise programs within their respective cities have shown that several benefits to the community. The benefits include increase in college enrollment, high school graduations, benefits in home ownerships, people will move back into the city, and the strengthening of the local workforce. We expect those same benefits. And we expect also hope to be restored in the house. That's just as important as anything that I just said. We have been working diligently to ensure that the development and implementation of this Erie Promise program will happen. It's been meeting since four sub, it's been meeting and it has four subcommittees who will focus on four particular parts of it. There will be an education part, there will be a legislation part, financial part, and a legal, and a legal aspect of it. The Erie Promise Planning Committee will be meeting again soon to solidify what the Promise Program will be in Erie. We are hopeful that we energize to keep working towards education and quality in our community. We know that the community that rests on its equity is a community that is best for all of us. We appreciate the community's ongoing support and affirmation of this work. If you would like to get involved in the City of Erie's Promise Program, please reach out to Mike Outlaw. Mike's email address is moutlaw at eriepa.us. We're asking all of you, if you find some type of way that you could participate, to please participate. I think this is a very important uh, project. Again, I think it's part of restoring hope. I think if Pittsburgh could do it in places like that, we could do it here. We have the same corporate structure. We're going to need everybody all hands on deck. So thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Mark and Sarah, for the efforts that you've committed to this process in realizing that education is the gateway, again, to home ownership and building wealth. This administration understands the need to engage young people on the journey through the People's Supper. For the People's Supper to transform Erie, we must keep our young people around the table, starting with the children. Andy Herrera, Director of Educational Equity and Diversity Programs at Penn State Barron and Project Lead for the Better Together Youth Matters will speak on the project that serves to promote and instill a greater understanding of empathy, respect among our city's youth, and thus leading to a more civil, welcoming, and culturally aware community. Andy. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to personally, as an institution at Penn State Baron, thank the mayor for the opportunity and Michael and his team to be part of this uh, effort and this, this uh, initiative that we're working here together. It's interesting that we're talking about changes in inclusion and diversity and racial equality, evidently changes such as the one that the mayor is initiating here in our city and other places are important. But we also, and I think we hear a lot that we're talking about hope. Many of us are talking about hope and I think that connects so strongly with our youth and that's why, you know, when we think about hope, it's a hope in our future and that things get better and in this case, we're talking about our youth. So as an as a educational institution at Penn State Barron, we wanted to make sure that we were involved in that change. And 
not only involve our students as mentors, but also uh, bring uh, the youth to our campus. So we know that the future lies with our uh, youth. Uh, we, not only as, as an educational institution, but I think as, as people, we have a responsibility, all of us, to instill in them a purpose, right? A purpose and encourage them to contribute positively to our community and to our society. An important, an important aspect of that growth in them is to help them develop uh, 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 an ability to communicate effectively. Communication is so important. And also, we all also want to encourage them to treat others with dignity and respect, right? That's what we are trying to achieve. So in this initiative uh, that we uh, put together with the mayor's group, the Better Together Youth Matters, that was one of our efforts to, to promote in them that sense of listening to others, communicating with others, treating others with dignity and respect. So the project uh, was to bring a number of students from the Erie School District to our campus from different backgrounds, different social economic backgrounds, and engage them facilitate, through the facilitation of the people's supper in a communication and communicating and talking to each other and to listening to each other and with the purpose and the aim at gaining understanding among each other, first of all. Wow, once you hear other people's stories, and that's one of the things that is powerful about the people's supper, is the stories when you hear, wow, really, that happened to you? Yeah, it did. And this is, you know, what I went through. So you gain that empathy and you gain that understanding. It's so powerful. So we, that's what we're trying to do with a number of youth uh, in our community, to engage them in that conversation in order to gain understanding, empathy, sensitivity, respect. We were so close uh, to doing that in March, last March. We were about a week away. We were going to do the event at Penn State Barron. And there, then we had the, the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, you know, unfortunately, we had to postpone the event. We are still determined to hold the event. We're hoping to do it. We're now considering doing it virtually or in person. Uh, Penn State Barron classes just started a couple of weeks ago. So our students are getting settled into their classes and everything else. Your school district just started a couple of days ago. So. Our hope is to, once everybody is settled in a few weeks down the road, we will begin those conversations again with the relevant individuals, uh, people from the Erie School District, from Barron. In fact, eventually the idea is to have it with other colleges as well. But anyway, in a few weeks, once everybody's settled in some sort of a routine, we will resume our conversations, our discussions, and then see how we can make it happen. Uh, and we hope to do this every year. Uh, again, there's a power in conversation, there's a power in understanding, and that's what we're trying to achieve. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andy, for your hard work, to Penn State for their commitment, Penn State Bear for their commitment to this process and being at the table. We realize that um, without the youth, Erie's future is bleak. We need the youth to begin to express their ideologies and what they believe is the hope that sustains them so we can retain their gifts and talents right here in our beloved city. Next, I'd like to invite Ben Spiegan to the podium to discuss the third project coming out of the People's Supper, which is the Workforce Development Initiative. Ben. Uh, thank you, Michael, uh, and thank you, Mayor, and your entire administration for your continued work on this initiative. Uh, as the People's Supper Series drew to an end, the need for a workforce development initiative focused on supporting minority-owned businesses was clear. As the Better Together Council took shape, I was asked to serve on the Workforce Development Committee to work with members of City Hall and the Better Together Council. We had begun our work making progress through the end of 2019 and into the beginning of 2020. And then we need no reminder of what happened next. While its impact continues to be felt worldwide, COVID-19 has even more so shined a light on what we already knew. Uh, there are significant racial disparities in business opportunities and support. With many businesses across the country having to shutter their doors when the shutdown began, the statistics are staggering. 
From February to April, there was a 41% decline of black business owners, a 36% decline in immigrant business owners, and a 32% decline amongst Latino and Latina business owners, compared to only a 17% drop amongst white business owners across the United States. The pandemic didn't create these disparities, it highlighted and exacerbated them. Because before the pandemic, minority-owned small businesses were twice as likely to be classified as at risk or distressed than non-minority-owned small businesses. And the US Federal Reserve indicates that distressed companies are three times as likely as healthy businesses to close because of a two-month revenue shock. Both before and during, we wanted to be able to understand what was happening in Erie and how we might fill the gap. As we developed our plan to promote workforce development to minorities and new Americans in Erie, Pennsylvania, we met with the Mayor's New American Council, Business Council, and many others to seek their counsel. Some of the work to address equity and workforce development in Erie to date has been Bridgeway Capital Minority-Owned Business Accelerator, which is a part of Bridgeway's entrepreneurship hub. Now this nine month accelerator program allows entrepreneurs to learn as a cohort, build networks, and develop a plan for businesses through seminars and networking events. Now these seminars cover uh, customer discovery, market validation, financial management, business development, and professional network development. Thrive in Erie, a 10 month incubator program designed to quote, break barriers, to entrepreneurship and facilitate the growth of businesses. And this happens through a one-on-one -on -one mentoring, monthly educational seminars on topics such as accounting, social media, marketing, sales, legal concerns, and strategic planning, networks of networking events, and more. This project has been funded through the CDBG, through the city's Department of Community uh, and Economic Development. Jen Hoffman serves as liaison between the city and the program being led by Paramount Pursuits. Also, City TAP, the Training Assistance Program, funds Erie's first ever workforce development grants for city businesses providing financial support and support for job readiness training. Now, Ms. Hoffman is available to give more information to anyone who's interested on that, and you can contact her by email at jhoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N, at erie.pa.us. Now we've also connected with Nika Nastari Carpenter to be of support on her work towards Erie becoming a certified welcoming city, which you'll hear about more in the future. But for now, I will note that the city of Erie is working with the Erie Regional Chamber and Growth Partnership and planning to apply for Welcoming America's Gateways for Growth Challenge in order to obtain a research grant. The research will be done by the new American economy, and this will yield a report on the economic impact of refugees and immigrants in Erie, because as it stands, that data does not exist here in Erie. We don't have it. The application is due September 30th. Awardees will be notified on October 28th, and early in November, the awardees will be announced publicly. Nikon is now in the process of putting together the application and composing letters of support. So in short, we in the Workforce Development Committee intend to work alongside the city staff to support these initiatives and to continue uh, exploring ways that we can best do that as a community. The viruses of racism, bigotry, and intolerance are not new. They are centuries old. While the novel once in a century COVID-19 pandemic continues to rack countries throughout the globe, our nation and our neck of the woods here in Erie, Pennsylvania, the work to build equitable community must persist. We are big enough and bold enough to fight more than one virus at a time, and we must persist. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Well said, well stated. This is very important work. Finding a family-sustaining job is essential for every human being in Erie, regardless of your race, religion, national origin, gender, or color of your skin. The next voice you will hear is Jennifer, Jennifer Hoffman, the Business Development Officer for the City of Erie, and she will shed light on the Multicultural Community Development Fund. But before I bring up Jen, allow me to give honor where honor is due to Mayor, Mayor Schimber. Your leadership since 2018 
your voice, your foresight to address national issues here locally is commendable. This administration is working diligently to help you fulfill your vision and mission to make Erie a city where we all can celebrate our rich cultural diversity and end structural, institutional, interpersonal, and individual racism. So thank you for that leadership, Mayor. <laughs> it was not. <laughs> it was not. Um, so, Jen, Jennifer Hoffman, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Norma Upperman is the project lead for the Multicultural Development Fund, and she's unable to attend today, but she definitely sends her regards. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Jen Hoffman. I am the Business Development Officer for the City of Erie. I am also the Staff Liaison for the Workforce Development uh, Project that Ben spoke about and the Multicultural Development Fund. I'd like to start this morning by mentioning a few statistics. According to the McKinsey U.S. Small Business Pulse Survey, which is an ongoing survey, uh, but these numbers that I'm going to give you did come about this spring. 42% of black, indigenous, or people of color owned small businesses who responded to the survey reported that obtaining credit was increasingly difficult due to COVID-19 compared to 29% of all the respondents. In the time of COVID-19, minority owned small businesses are mostly in industries that are more susceptible to disruption. Industries like service industry, food services, personal, laundry services, and retail. They're also more likely to work in the social assistance sector, which, while less likely to see immediate job loss, uh, this industry has heightened exposure to the virus. 51% of small business jobs performed by minorities and new Americans could be vulnerable in the near term due to COVID-19. And lastly, 58% of minority-owned businesses are either extremely or very concerned about the financial vi viability of their business compared to 47% of all respondents. After the People's Summit, it was determined that a development fund to help minorities and new Americans with technical assistance, gap funding, and down payment assistance uh, was an immediate need. If we, can say, if we can seed a fund that will offer low interest financing and eventual grant assistance to the minority com community in Erie, we are sure to see our entrepreneurial ventures increase. This will lead to more jobs, more stability, and more investment in our city. Outreach to traditional and non-traditional funders is in process. When partnered with the exciting new incub incubators like Thrive in Erie by Paramount Pursuits and the Bridgeway Minority Owned Business Accelerator, Erie's minority community will have a necessary funding avenue for success. It's great to learn everything that you need to be an entrepreneur, but when you're ready to launch, you need somewhere to go for funding. This will be a devoted fund to help our people of color, black, indigenous, minority, new American, business owners and entrepreneurs in Erie. We're still working out exactly what the Multicultural Development Fund will look like in practice, and unfortunately COVID has slowed the process, but it is coming. When we recall Mayor Schember's vision for Erie, two of the priorities are rich cultural diversity and an abundance of family-sustaining jobs. With the multi